Sadie, welcome to my channel, Flick Cartina. I'm sorry, I apologize for my voice. I've been a little bit under the weather recently. I had a very busy weekend and apparently you can get sick from overworking, so that's kind of what's happening here. I just have a little cold, but it hasn't stopped me from making videos, so let's get started and talk about the release of the Snyder Cut. Now this video is somewhat of a movie review, but more of a comparison of the original Justice League, the theatrical release that released in 2017, 2018, and now what Zack Snyder has released his four hour version of Justice League. We're going to talk about the pros and cons of both and see which one is arguably better. Before I get started into this movie comparison review, I do want to say that there are minor spoilers, very minor, but I try to keep this spoiler free as possible. But anyways, let's get started. So the other day I watched both the Justice League and the Snyder Cut. I watched the 2018 release and then I watched the Snyder Cut. It was six hours and had to take several breaks in between, but the wonderful thing about streaming is that I didn't have to worry about missing anything. I just had to worry about pausing the movie at the right moment. But basically Justice League had a very basic structure of plot. Um, the Snyder Cut had a more deeper storytelling alternative. The Justice League was entertaining. I didn't hate it. It wasn't like a bad version of the movie, but Snyder Cut was dedicated to story and more dedicated to the craft and the art of filmmaking. Joss Whedon and Zack Snyder are both very, very different directors, so I'm not sure why Warner Brothers would want one to take over for the other in either situation. I think Joss Whedon just had the appeal of the other superhero movies that he's done, and so he was choice that they just made. I think a lot of what Joss Whedon did to the Justice League version that was released in theatrical was because of director's pride, like, oh, I'm taking over this project, but I have so much to my name that I need to maintain that. So he completely rewrote the story and made some very interesting different camera angles. The Justice League was literally chopping up a four hour movie, taking those chunks and then adding in Joss Whedon's little flares and things. So it was a very chopped up version of the story, whereas the Snyder Cut is the more consistent tone of a movie. I felt more at peace with all of the decisions that they made with it. So that's just a general comparison of what I thought initially what the Snyder Cut had and what Justice League had. That's what I'm going to refer to it as. It's Justice League and the Snyder Cut. Obviously they're the two, two of the same movie, but whatever. We're just going to call it that for <laughs> simplicity's sake. So let's dive a little bit deeper into the pros and cons of the Justice League. So I rewatched the Justice League before I watched the Snyder Cut just to remind myself of certain things. Like I just didn't remember Justice League as a movie at all. It was more of a refresher and it the movie wasn't bad. It was actually very entertaining to watch. I was very appeased. <laughs> I thought it was funny. I thought it was like a very basic comic book movie. I thought the characters were likable and it takes a little too long to get to the point, but that's kind of standard of what happens in superhero movies anyways, especially with team up movies sometimes. I did not appreciate some of the sexist angles that Joss Whedon did in terms of both the Amazons and Gal Gadot. Justice League really focused on the team rather than the individual. So it was more of a, let's form a team. We're having trouble getting formed together as a team because we are individuals, but we're not going to get delve into the individuals. We're just very different people, so we don't work well together, or I don't really want to work with people. And then the necessity of the Justice League needs to happen, and so it happens. And it was more of just a, oh yeah, we're getting a team together, and we're having some difficulty doing it, and the villain's just going to lie and wait until the team is formed, until we can have our huge big battle scene full of CGI and orange. So Steppenwolf in Justice League is one of the most basic villains I have ever seen. He just has a purpose, like he's getting these three cubes to destroy the world and that is it. There's no reason why he wants to destroy the world, only because that's his purpose in life, that's what he came to do. He's basically taking revenge for himself and like making sure that he can get the glory that he deserves from Earth, which, you know, I understand, but it's not really one of those things that everybody does in their daily routine. Like, oh yes, I'm going to take revenge on this world that I could have destroyed but didn't because my pride got in the way. Like that doesn't happen in normal life. What I did like from Justice League that was not in the Snyder Cut was Aquaman's like rally speech. I thought that was very on character. It was more Joss Whedon's writing style but at the same time I really enjoyed it and like I was kind of sad to miss it in the Snyder Cut but that's the only thing that I would have 
really like to see in the Snyder Cut, but other than that, all of the best scenes were already in the Snyder Cut, the scenes that I liked specifically. Well, those are my pros and cons of the Justice League and what I thought about the Justice League before watching the Snyder Cut. If you like what you just heard, consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. I do this every week where I talk about movies. I have four different series that I do on this YouTube channel. I do movie reviews, I do trailer reactions, I have a How the Real Rolls where I do deep movie analysis, and then I have a I Finally Watch series which is where I just talk about movies that I've never seen before that I should have seen before now at this point in my adult life. So if you like what you hear here, consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. It really helps me out. I'm trying to get to 800 subscribers by the end of 2021. Here are my thoughts on the Snyder Cut itself, and I know everybody's been waiting for this. I certainly have been. After years and years of asking and asking and asking, Warner Bros. finally greenlit the Snyder Cut and basically fulfilled Zack Snyder's vision. So a little bit of backstory behind why Joss Whedon took over for Zack Snyder is because there was a lot of controversy over it, but essentially the bare bones story is that Zack Snyder finished filming everything. He fin finished filming originally a four hour long movie that might have gotten broken up into three separate episodes or like whatever or two separate movies. And he finished filming, but then unexpectedly after filming and during post-production, his daughter passed away, which is very heartbreaking for a parent. There's no word to describe what a parent feels. But Warner Brothers still wanted to go ahead with the movie, and so they took on Joss Whedon for the project to just finish it, like make sure that everything was okay. Just, I guess, basically to just say, here's what you cut here, here's where you cut here. I think this is how the story's gonna flow. We're good, we're done, that's it. No, he took it on and was like, we're gonna change everything and make it a two hour movie instead of a four hour movie and it's gonna be my movie. <laughs> and that's not really how Zack Snyder envisioned it so Joss Whedon basically reshot the whole movie and you know the term fix it in post? That was this entire movie. So Zack Snyder finally, after years and years of fans and cast members and crew members asking for the Snyder Cut to be released, Warner Brothers finally made sure that Zack Snyder was able to release the cut that he had originally designed. So that's a little bit of backstory about the Snyder Cut, and here is where I talk about the pros and cons of the Snyder Cut in my opinion. I was actually very impressed with this movie. I wasn't looking forward to it because I wasn't impressed by the Justice League in any regard at all. I wasn't really super excited for the Snyder Cut itself because I just didn't really care about the Justice League. So I was very pleasantly surprised when the four hour movie was actually enjoyable. I watched The Irishman not knowing it was four hours long and had to take a break and watch it over the week instead of just in one sitting. But the Snyder Cut actually enjoyed myself and watched it through entirely in one sitting. Technically it was like two sittings because I took a break and like had to like, reorient my body from the positions that I was like, <laughs> sitting down and watching it and so that's kind of what was happening but other than that I did get was able to get through it in one day and it was very enjoyable. So because Warner Brothers did it backwards where instead of releasing the individual's movies like the standalone movies like Marvel did where they released Captain America, Iron Man, they released um, The Incredible Hulk, all of these different things and then had the team up movie. Warner Brothers did it the opposite way. They wanted a team up movie now and they wanted it like now. So what happened was they took characters and said okay you guys team up with no regard for their backstories or anything. The fans, the comic book fans, know already what happens to these characters but they don't know the cinematic versions of them so it's a little bit weird so you don't know which version of Aquaman you're looking at, you don't know which version of the Flash because there's a lot of versions of the Flash because of the huge multiverse. So Zack Snyder took that challenge and was like, okay, we're gonna we're gonna set up these characters properly. We're going to get a deeper look into the characters. I really, really love what they do to Cyborg's character because I love the character of Cyborg. What happens in this movie is that he gets a proper buildup, he gets a proper characterization motive for everything, whereas in Justice League he wasn't really, he was just there conveniently. Like, here's a robot that can understand alien everything. He's basically the box in human form. So let's just have him as a convenient plot device and just give some fan service and that's it. In the Snyder Cut, um, we got a lot more of the characterization of everyone. Not even just the characters who were just introduced to 
the Justice League themselves, we get some characterization of Diana Prince and Wonder Woman and into a little bit of Bruce Wayne and maybe even a little bit into Henry Cavill's Superman. A little bit of that. They still don't know what to do with Amy Adams and Lois Lane. Like she's just there as like Clark and that's it. The Snyder Cut was definitely more entrenched into the lore of comic books. You saw a lot more references to other characters. The DC comic universe, you saw a lot more of that kind of world building and it was more of a comic book movie than the Justice League was. This movie definitely builds up more of a cinematic universe. It does a better job of setting up a lot of things. And now I want to rewatch Aquaman to just get the full version of these characters as Zack Snyder had originally intended them to be. I don't really know, but you know, different directors, different styles, see what happens. I do think that there are some scenes in this movie, especially the last scene that just keeps coming on and on forever. Other than that, like this movie is a four hour long movie. It could have been a three and a half, but at least, I mean, at this point I'm just like, give us the four hours and that's it. Like that's gonna be great, we're, we're fine with it. So those are my thoughts on the Snyder Cut and now let's do a little comparison on which one is better. As soon as the movie starts for the Snyder Cut, you realize this is a completely different movie than what Justice League had been released. They're completely separate entities, like they're not even the same movie. So as soon as the movie starts, you know that they're different. So it's really hard to compare them because they're two completely different movies because they're made by two completely different directors. But I will have to say arguably that the Snyder Cut is the better movie because of its consistent tone, clear vision, and correct setup and payoff. The third act of the Justice League does not do the third act of the Snyder Cut justice. The third act of the Justice League is literally just a bunch of heroes fighting CGI aliens and monsters and I feel like this could have been all resolved. Even visually, I enjoyed the Snyder Cut a lot more. It just made more sense to me story-wise and everything. With the Justice League, I did enjoy it, but I just, the, the story is just all over the place and you don't make sense of anything. There's so many holes and with the Snyder Cut, everything is very consistent and I understand everything and everything was correctly built up and I was able to enjoy the characters more. So I think that the Snyder Cut is arguably better. I'm not really a fan of it, but I do think that it is a better movie. In conclusion, both were very expensive movies. Like I could taste the money that was spent on these different movies. Like I don't understand why they didn't just wait for Zack Snyder. I feel like this could have been better. Having two different directors do a movie is never a good option. These are two very different directors. I will say that there's no way that this movie would have been released theatrically. This four hour long movie I don't think that this movie would have been released theatrically at all because of just the way that movie theaters work. But because it's on streaming, I think that like there, this provides a lot of opportunity for people who want to make four hour long movies. Not that I'm gonna watch all of them, but like four hour long movies, if you make them right, you keep people engaged, they're actually really good. In any case, I do think that Warner Brothers did do it backwards where they did the team up movie before the standalone hero movies, which is not the way to do things. <laughs> you don't tell the second act of the movie before you tell the first one. It just doesn't make sense for people's brains to work that way in a linear storyline. Like I said before, I'm not a huge fan of the Snyder Cut, but it is our arguably better than the Justice League. I was definitely more satisfied with it. I really don't have a lot of negative things to say about the Snyder Cut. Maybe a few things, but I really couldn't tell you at this point. <laughs> what did you guys think of the Snyder Cut? Did you think it was better? Do you think the four hours is too long? Do you think it should have been two hours like Warner Brothers had originally intended it to be? Or do you think it should be four hours like Zack Snyder wanted it to be? Let me know in the comments down below what you thought about the Snyder Cut if you have seen it. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great random Thursday and I will see you on the other side of the screen.